y'all. I'm going to show you how I made my own chicken lights for my truck. I used to have those LEDs, the strip lights, and once one or two of those burn out, which they do fairly quickly and they are expensive, I decided to make my own using these inexpensive LED lights, which are individually replaced the way I had wired in. So if I ever have a problem with one of these, pop it out, put another one in. And I used a relay to do it, and I'm gonna show you how I wired that as well. As I said before, I used a relay on this installation. And what I did is I found my parking lamp fuses number 28 and 29, which are located here. This is a Chevy Silverado 2016 LML, which happened to be located, my fuse tap was started right here. Tapped it in, made a small gap in my box here, helped keep out moisture. So these are the two wires that are running down the driver's side that you just saw a minute ago outside. And I'm tapping these in for the passenger side. The black is gonna be negative and the red is gonna be positive. These little wire taps. Put together like this. You wanna make sure you have a pair of pliers. Give it a squeeze. On both ends. Make sure it's snapped. And another thing I like to do, just to make sure it was a connection, I like to rotate it around a little bit, just to make sure that that tooth got in there, bit that wire like it's supposed to. The reason that I used such a large wire loom for this project is so I can hide most of the wire when I run it across the truck. So if you're wondering why I have such a large wire loom for such small wire, I'm also running from here across. All right, as luck would have it, I don't have enough red and black wire. So I had some old trailer wire left over, which is plenty long enough. And I'm going to use the yellow as my hot and the brown as my ground. And I'm gonna run it along the firewall there. I've already crimped the two male ends. Now I can put a little bit of liquid electric tape on this. It really helps seal up moisture. And this stuff, although gooey, dries hard. I really like it. this uh, blue magic electric tape. Putting wire loom on the wire that's gonna run across the uh, firewall to the engine bay. So, man, I know if anyone has a better way of doing this, please send me a comment. I would appreciate it. All right, now, all I have left, to left here is to run the wire loom back to my connections that I made where my right relay again. is. Nice and neat back here. So I'm gonna wire tie everything up, make it look factory. Just a few little snippets. Try and keep it as high as I can away from this turbocharger. So I'm gonna try and wire tie it above this heat shielded loom up here. 
offer it some protection. All right, I wired this as high as I can on top of that heat shield loom so it doesn't overheat from the turbocharger. And I'm just following that line that runs along this one here. That's just a matter of trying to find the neatest way to hide it all. No one will ever know it was even there. All right, I had, a, I had a string when I pulled those old crappy lights out. So hopefully I'll be able, easier to trace this, which it worked through the firewall. Look down here. Now I have it all the way here to this point, which I'm going to wire tie it up here. And then I have another loom that I'm gonna run the rest of the wire through and show you how I connect the lights. All right, how I've attached this is I've used quarter 20 bolts. However, these two particular brackets to behind your ugly tank there's actually steel behind these these I didn't find steel behind these two or the four on the other side this bar here I got from Home Depot I measured it the rough length of my nerf bar and then I split that in half because these are three quarter inch lights that go in here you can find them um, on Amazon, uh, I used a step bit, went drilled in three quarter inch, then I pretty much figured out where I wanted this end to go. So then I found the center part between that. So that's how I had mine centered up. Here's the piece of aluminum. So what I've done is I've gone out to Amazon, I bought these uh, inexpensive LED lamps. These are the ones that I showed you earlier in the video and I'm gonna show you how I popped them in this side. This is the bottom of my running board. Now I have a 2016 Duramax LML and uh, when I flipped this thing over it was quite pitted and dirty. So if you haven't seen the bottom of your uh, running board in a while I highly recommend you take a look at it and maybe even think about protecting it. Um, I happen to use this undercoating. It may or may not have been the best thing I could have used, but that's what I'm stuck with. What I did too is I used a smaller bolt as I sprayed it to keep the overspray from going inside the holes here. On the end caps as well, I've added a light. Isn't that cool? These are protected as well. And as you can see on this end, the shape of the running board gives you that much space to add an extra light on the end of your running boards. I have it on that one. It looks really sweet. I think you're gonna like it. Okay, because I'm using a crimp fitting on these wires, I went with a bigger wire loom to protect that particular fitting. <clears throat> the smaller one I just ran through the engine bay. I'm just slightly running here to the larger loom. And I'm gonna zip tie this off. So it'll hold those two together. And I can continue on with a larger loom for these larger fittings I'm about to show you, I'm printing on here. Now I'm gonna show you how to install the lights. And the reason I have a knot in all my lights is an electrician once told me, if you 
testing a bunch of lights and you have wire left over and you put a knot in it, that means it's tested. So it's kind of like a little insider there. What I'm gonna do now is install my grommet. Pass these through one at a time. There's not a lot of room. And then, without pulling on the wire, you want to push your light in and line them up. I'm going to keep the LEDs running horizontal. You'll see what I'm talking about if you purchase them. And that's one installed. Now I have to do is finish running my wire in my loom and pulling it out in the spots that I need it. Now with a razor blade, I carefully separated these two wires. It's not hard to do if you take your time, just barely make a slit, slice in the wire, and then you got to get in there and pull it apart. And then I'll take these connectors here and connect them accordingly. Turn them around. Make sure it bites through that plastic. You have to make sure it gets in there right. Looks like I got two good bites. And now, once again, yellow to yellow. Black to brown. I'm in this larger wire loom. That's why I went with this bigger loom. They're going to stick out a little, but it is protected. That's the effect I was hoping for. And now I'll take a wire tie, stick it between the two. And they should stay set. Right there. that up under there and we're good to go. And this is about one of the most tedious parts of the whole job. Yeah, I'm working hard. And I'm supposed to be the videographer.
Okay, and now let's test them. If you listen real close, you can hear my Fast 95 in the background running. Okay, so I've got everything buttoned up in here so far. Here's my relay running through that extra large wire loom I was explaining to you earlier, just so I could pass this through and I could make my four connectors in here and it looks really nice and neat. It, it doesn't look uh, wiry, if you want to put a word to it. And it was just that easy. As you can see, I already have the running board installed. I have the wiring harness tucked up underneath there, all nice and neat. If you really take your time, there's a lot of nice little places you can put wire ties up there, put the wiring harness up, it hides everything. All I have left to do is wire the two end lights to the harness and it'll be job complete. And I'll show you what it looks like tonight. All right, hey everybody. Now I'm gonna show you what my chicken lights look like on the road at night.